Oh, I guess we're ready to start. Welcome to ApacheCon. Uh, if you joined us in the other two sessions, you probably know who I am. Uh, this is real-time stock processing with Apache NiFi, Flink, and Kafka. Got myself and Pierre here, and he will introduce himself when we get there. Who am I? Tim Spann. I'm a principal data flow field engineer. I run a meetup, which is running t tonight, virtually. So if you're interested in this sort of stuff, we'll be uh, doing some fun uh, talks there, have an open forum, join, talk. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. Over to Thanks, you, Pierre. Um, so I'm Pierre Villan. I'm the product manager at Cloudera in charge of uh, everything around Apache NiFi, basically. So uh, all of our products are on NiFi, NiFi registry, uh, MiNiFi agents, uh, all of our story around edge management. So when it comes to NiFi, uh, that's uh, something I'm usually aware of. Um, I've been involved in the Apache NiFi project uh, since 2015. Uh, I'm a committer and PMC member now. Uh, if you are already using NiFi, you probably came across one of my blogs. Uh, you have some of my details on the on this slide. Uh, and before joining Platter, uh, I worked at Google and uh, Horton works for a few years. Um, so this talk is uh, really a very, let's say, basic use case, but it's a very good use case to demonstrate how to deal with a, a streaming use case and use a combination of the best Apache solutions. Uh, when you are dealing with a, a streaming use case. So in this case, it's really about ingesting real-time data from many sources, um, do some analytics, have a dashboard on top of it, something simple, but which is really something common as soon as you have uh, a streaming use case. Next slide, team. Yeah, thanks. So before we jump into it, uh, and I will try to be quick so uh, Tim can spend a lot of time on the demo. Uh, just a few numbers about the main projects uh, we are going to talk about in this uh, in this talk. So NiFi um, um, latest version is uh, 1.12.1, uh, which has been released today. So uh, uh, I can share with you that uh, NiFi 1.12.1 is out. Um, if you don't know about it, it's been created and open sourced by the NSA. Uh, the initial release uh, in the ASF was uh, back in 2006. Uh, it's a, a very active community, uh, over 300 contributors, over 1,200 people in the Slack channels, uh, over 3 million Docker pools. Uh, if you want to get up and running very quickly with NiFi, I strongly suggest to uh, use Docker. If you want uh, a NiFi standalone instance very quickly, that's the best way to be up and running with the latest version very quickly. Uh, as I said, uh, in the Apache NiFi project, we have many sub-projects. So we have NiFi, uh, we have agents, uh, both Java and C++ versions. We also have some other versions for Android and things like that. Uh, we have the NiFi registry, uh, which is what we use for every, everything around CI, CD, moving flows from one environment to another. Um, so that's also um, a very useful component. Uh, Kafka, right now we are on the 2.6 release line. It's been created and input source by LinkedIn. Uh, it's in the uh, ASF uh, since 2011. Uh, Flink, uh, we are on the 1.11 release line. It's been released in 2011. Um, if I'm not saying anything wrong, it's been a fork from another project which was uh, called Stratosphere. Uh, it's been created by collaboration between uh, some universities uh, in Germany. Um, this is one of the most active projects uh, in the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, over 700 contrib contributors. Uh, that's the second repository by the number of commits over last year. Uh, and it's the most active project on the mailing list. So 
very strong community, very active projects. If you are looking for uh, a streaming engine, uh, that's probably the one you want. So, um, so obviously, uh, I have the hoodie. I'm going to talk mainly about NiFi. Uh, what is NiFi used for? Uh, so, when I introduce NiFi to people, um, I usually say that NiFi is uh, the perfect gateway to get the data in. Uh, so. When you have a simple use case and you have one source for uh, the data you need for your use case, you probably don't want NiFi. But when you have many use cases and uh, use cases have many sources, uh, you probably want a consistent way of getting the data in where you will do uh, further processing on top of the data. Um, it can be very challenging when you have many sources, uh, a large variety of protocols to deal with, uh, many formats, many schemas. Um, you some some uh, sources are batch oriented. Some sources as are real time. NiFi can deal with all of this. So uh, usually, NiFi is the perfect tool to get the data in and then distribute it into many uh, destinations where you will do the actual processing. So NiFi is really like uh, some kind of ELT tool for both streaming and batch. Um, you are extracting the data, making sure it gets uh, where you need the data to be, and you make some, uh, let's say, uh, format conversion, uh, schema validation, things like that. Um, so this slide is really about what we think to be the best uh, reference architecture when it comes to uh, streaming use case. So. Basically, you use NiFi to collect the data from the edge, from uh, any source you have, whatever you, you have, uh, basically. Uh, NiFi or MiNiFi agents can be used to collect the data. Um, we use Apache Kafka as, a let's say, a buffer uh, to store the data when uh, the sources are streaming oriented. As I said, NiFi can deal with both uh, streaming and batch oriented uh, sources. Uh, but Kafka is really great uh, if you need a buffering layer for streaming data. Um, then NiFi is used, is used to distribute the data into many destinations. Obviously, uh, when this is a pure streaming use case, we probably want to use Kafka once again. So we send this data that has been validated, uh, enriched, uh, um, converted from one format to another into Kafka again. Uh, and uh, from there, we use um, tools like Apache Fling to do some real streaming processing on top of it. And then <clears throat> we, sorry, we use uh, Apache Druids or Apache Kudu as uh, uh, the destination store where you can uh, run analytics, uh, do some time series, run SQL queries, uh, and things like that. So that's really a very opinionated uh, architecture of what we recommend with uh, the best Apache tools you can find uh, today. So before uh, I let team be the star of this talk, I just want to quickly say where uh, this is going to be running. So uh, in this case, uh, we are leveraging uh, CDP, uh, the Cloudera Data Platform, which uh, gives you the ability to start uh, dedicated and individual clusters uh, based on specific technologies. Uh, this is a great way to ensure very dedicated resources based on your needs and your use cases. And all of the clusters with dedicated technologies uh, share a consistent layer uh, spanning across uh, uh, cloud providers, on-premises deployments, uh, deployments uh, in the cloud, and your clusters to ensure consistent policies, consistent schema management, uh, data governance, data lineage, uh, all of this. Um, so that's what team is going to be uh, presenting for, for the demo right now. So I will be answering any question you have in the chat while uh, team is doing the demo. Tim, that's for you. Thanks. Very cool. Yeah, we have, I'm running in a couple of different environments. So I have a, like you mentioned, CDP public cloud, 
running for this. I also have uh, NiFi and Minify running in my home office here, like you saw in that first one. This is the Edge, and maybe the my laptop's the gateway. I mean, it is not obviously not a production environment in my office here. And then I also have a Cloud Era cluster running a number of open source Apache projects in our uh, what we call our private cloud base, which is running on uh, also happen to be running on AWS because I, I don't no one will let me have a uh, a server room in my house anymore, unfortunately. I wish I did have a set of servers here, but unfortunately, I've been told I can't have them. So they're not here. OK, this is a little bit of what this actually looks like before we start browsing through all the different uh, infrastructure. Uh, I have stock data. Again, this one doesn't have. This is a pretty easy one. Uh, if you saw the other sessions, there's a lot of other sources of data that we could be showing. And maybe it makes sense to combine them with the stock data. That really depends on your company. If you were a real company, you'd probably have multiple sources of this data, maybe from paid sources, maybe Bloomberg, some other financial feeds, maybe from your in-house databases, maybe from logs. Maybe you're combining that for doing your, sending your machine learning for your data scientists. Maybe they need the weather data, or maybe that's from NOAA and the public data, or maybe that's from a paid service that has hyper-localized weather. Maybe also you have, you know, some sensor readings you're pulling off of uh, devices. I don't know what devices might help for stock. If you're monitoring stock, maybe this is, devices from uh, some of the companies. Maybe you have a proprietary device you put in stores, manage it, monitors foot traffic. If their foot traffic goes up, maybe you use that to figure out if you should sell. You know, you could get you could get pretty uh, pretty advanced in some of these ideas depending on what uh, what makes sense for you. Okay, let me uh, go into a live demo here. So we left this, so data coming into NiFi. I'm pushing some of it right to Kudu. Some of it's going through Kafka. I'm doing some dashboards. I also have live events coming through uh, Flink SQL. Now, ultimately, probably by the end of the year, I'm gonna have a better demo. Probably gonna find a couple more sources so we could do some joins there. Uh, I have a couple other sources of stock data and some uh, cryptocurrency. Try to figure a way to marry those two data sources together. But one thing that I want to add to this is you might have seen the Druid talks. Apache uh, Druid is pretty cool, and it's very easy for it to uh, pull data from Kafka. So I have NiFi push my data to Kafka, have Druid read it, and then I'll have uh, dashboards on top of that. Uh, I'm kind of lazy to write my own dashboards. So I've been waiting for a uh, project to come out for that. Looks like uh, Cloudera will have one, so I'll just use that to display those live dashboards from Druid. You can also do the same thing. Uh, I'll show you a little bit on visualizing the data as it's in Kudu, but at some point there'll be a connector for that for Flink and the same for Apache Hue, so I can have those real-time queries there and not in the command line, which is not the best way. I could also wrap the Flink SQL in an app, or I can write, say, a Apache Kafka Streams app in Java and dashboard. maybe push as events come in, push it to a dashboard. Also, probably not approved by Pierre, I like to use NiFi as a web server to host live web apps. So I could push out events over web sockets to a, a mobile app. So I don't think anyone approves of doing that, but that, that is a way I could visualize that. I've been toying around with that, but I, I don't know that's the best idea. But well, let's take a look at what we got here. So we'll start off, I have uh, one of my uh, clusters here just want to show you that there's a lot of Apache projects running in one spot. I've got Apache Atlas, Apache Flink, 
H base, HDFS, Hive, U, Impala, Kafka, Kudu. If you could remember all these Apache projects, I, I should send you a sticker to say good job. That's a lot of projects. But let's let's get into NiFi. So I've got NiFi running on AWS. Uh, one thing I have here is I'm invoking a REST API to get uh, my stock data back. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do that, which is one of the flexible things with uh, NiFi. One thing I'd suggest is I'll put it post in links. There's some recent videos on how to do NiFi right, and there's four of them and from Mark, and we'll, we'll share those. Those are really great watches, so hopefully you show there. But here I'm just having a schedule here every 30 seconds because I just want to, I don't want to call them too much and they tell me I'm calling them too much. I've been banned from a couple of sites because NIFI can read REST calls extremely fast. So I'm calling, I called some sites 10, 25,000 times a second. That might be too much for them. So be wary, NIFI is faster than you. So here I'm just doing a get call to an API, and I'm just going to be pulling back uh, Cloudera stock. Might be better to grab someone else's stock, but that's the one I'm doing. As you see here, data is starting to pile in. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it from JSON to Avro, uh, from JSON to uh, cleaner JSON, and then because I want to make sure that it follows my schema. So I have a schema for the stock. It's got a couple fields I care about. There's a couple I don't care about. So I pull those in. I do a query. Here, if I wanted to do some kind of where clause to limit it, or maybe convert fields, rename them, uh, concatenate them, put sums. This is Apache Calcite, so you got a pretty rich SQL here. Well, what I'm going to do is just... Uh, uh, a simple select all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two fields. The one flaw with this particular REST API, there's no key. And I like keys because if I just push this data in there, uh, maybe the timestamp works, maybe it doesn't. I like to have a key. And I also, if for some reason, they don't return back the symbol I was looking for. I'm going to put the Cloud Era symbol in there. This is a very nice uh, processor, uh, the update record. As you see here, it's JSON coming in, JSON coming out. I don't have to do anything other than, you know, do a slash here and as many properties I want to change in all those records at once, I could do it. Here I'm just hard coding Cloudera, and this is a, uh, a reserved word in uh, NiFi expressions. It gives me back a unique ID which is nice. So I have a key there. And then I'm just going to push that data to Kafka. You're in our other sessions. Being a Kafka producer is very trivial, especially if you're using records. So I got that JSON coming in. I got Avro coming out. This is important because Avro is a really, Apache Avro is a nice format for working with Spark apps, with Flink apps, Kafka Connect. Kafka Streams, NiFi, shows up in uh, my schema, works with the schema registry very nicely and works, I could see it very nicely in uh, my monitoring tools. So that's really nice. Uh, the other little secret here is I'm sending that schema as a header, which is a nice feature uh, NiFi does for you. And I put a client ID in there so I could track who this is. Uh, let me just show you what these processors look like real quick to show you it's not that complex. So I'm using the name of the schema. I look at the registry, and then that'll just do that for the JSON. And then for the Avro writer, pretty straightforward. Now I just push that 86,000 records to Kafka. In a few seconds, this is running from a single node NiFi. And it'd be nice if it was a, a bigger cluster here, but it's, you know, I only got one node, you know, 16 cores, you know, only uh, two gig of RAM. <laughs> Not really that uh, powerful machine, but I'm pushing through these records pretty quick. So we did that first part. I've got that source. This was an event-oriented source that pulled back a, a bunch of records at once. 
I did a little cleanup. I did some, like you mentioned, ELT, augmented the data. I could have done a lookup, and that lookup could have been against a REST source. It could have been against a database, could have been against Kudu or HBase, and I could augment and enrich that data as it's coming in in a single step. And as you see here, there's no mention of what this data looks like. So this is, you can make this pretty reusable. So I had that schema. So I'm using this schema. I could use a different schema. I could use a different version of the schema. So if I edited this now and added another field or, you know, here I already have everything nullable. I could just make another version and now pass in version one and version two and NIFI code doesn't have to change. It's aware of schemas and versions. So I pass in no version number, it'll use the latest, pass in a version number to use that one. So you don't have to change your code when your data changes. That's nice, because you know you get mutable data sources out there. So the data came in, let's see where it went. I pushed it into Kafka. This is that topic, just see, making sure we have decent amount of data coming in here. I can see at a glance here, this is who's producing the data. That's my NIFI producer there. Here's who's reading it. I've got uh, a Kafka Connect app, and I've got uh, a NIFI consumer. He might be on pause because he's got uh, a lag there. But let's take a look at the data. As you see here, the keys are strings. That's that UUID. You can match them up. This is good if you're trying to figure out if you're tracking down a record or someone said, I didn't get that record that was sent. You know, I'm trying to keep my systems in sync. Something's missing. Makes it easy to find it in here, whatever partition it is, you know, whatever offset it is, you can browse here pretty easily, find what you're looking for. So I'm looking here, I see that whoever is consuming this, there's a lag for the NIFI one. So let's see who is supposed to read this data. This guy's over here is supposed to be reading it. So let's make sure we're he's reading it so we don't uh, get behind in our data. Got a couple of options here. Again, we're only on one node cluster, it's not as cool. But we read that Avro in, and here I'm converting it to JSON to do some things. There's the name, see a couple of things. He's getting that schema in. He's pulling that data in. We could take a look and see the uh, provenance to see what data just came in. That's pretty recent. Uh, a bunch of data, you could see the timestamps. So if you're trying to track things down, what's nice with NIFI is if I turn on developer console, I could see all the REST calls. NIFI does everything with REST. So it makes it very easy if you want to reuse that REST yourself. So that's a nice feature. And what I'm doing here is in two steps, I consumed it and I'm pushing it to Kudu. The reason why I pushed it to Kafka is to be that buffer. So I'm never going to lose the data and I can also consume it in multiple places. One here is NIFI to push it to Kudu and I'll show you some other places that I can grab that data. So that's as simple. If you're in the session today, we keep mentioning this one. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to wear my Apache Kudu shirt. This upsert it is awesome. I don't have to care if their record's already there. If it's there, update it. If not, insert it. That makes for a, a very happy time for me. I'm very, very happy to have that feature there. Uh, normally, that might be on another server. I don't want to hide this from you. It's too <laughs> uh, on the same canvas. Not very, uh, you know, generally that might be on another cluster. Is a good way to share data between clusters. Or obviously, I could just here right straight to Kudu and cut out that Kafka step. But having that buffer is important. It's also important for different consumers of this. I was in here showing you what's going on with those topics. But if we look here, I've got a, another app for this. This is a Kafka Connect app. You see it's on that topic. And I could drill down into that topic if I wanted to or I could drill down into this app. Again, it's a really simple app. This is a Kafka Connect app that reads from that topic and dumps it into HDFS. Not very exciting. And it's just gonna 
drop it in a directory and do it as Avro. You know, and that's the format we had it as. So pretty straightforward. Now, the other thing we're doing is you saw NiFi's pushing that to Kudu. Let's make sure we're getting that data. So here's our data. We're ordering it. This is a minute ago. And we can see my talk is not improving our stock price. So Pierre, you better answer some questions so we can get this up to like 12 or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you can see how easy it is to query. This is Apache Hue, really nice tool for doing queries. What I like about this one is it's got that uh, smart technology in here. So, you know, you don't have to remember the names of all the fields. You know, I start typing it, it gets it for me. That's really helpful because I don't always remember what I'm doing. It's also smart enough to know that usually that something has to be quoted because it's a reserved word. And if you do it without that, things are not going to be happy. See those funky ticks there? That's the reserved word. You now, if you do something wrong, you might get a different value just to give you an idea. Also have another one here to show you the power of hue, which is another great project. I just have a very simple, pretty similar query. I'm casting the values in Paula pretty powerful to uh, cast them to numbers. I probably should have changed my schema to numbers, but some of their data comes back weird. So I probably should add some more uh, transformations. Maybe that's another step I should do. Again, very easy for me to create a new table or drop this table and change it reload the data from Kafka and have that buffer there just to get, uh, maybe I want these as numbers. Maybe I need another field here. Maybe I want to merge this with another REST API. I've got a couple of sources of stock data. Maybe I merge a couple together to get uh, some more fields. But just to show you some uh, analytics on that data. So I've got that data in Kudu. I can real time visualize that in a UI has these visual apps you could do it in q or zeppelin again we mentioned maybe we'll do it with druid on top of this at some point uh this tool will start pulling in flink sql and so will hue so we could do it that way so we showed nifi consuming the data we showed kafka connect consuming the data now what's running here i'll do some previous if you look there's uh 3,500 pages <laughs> of these uh, stock quotes. This is a Flink SQL client that is doing a query on that topic to see the newest data. Let me show you how we did that. So we have a lot of catalogs we can connect to. You know how to spell things. Again, once this is in Hue or in another tool, this will be a little more friendly, but this is a developer conference. I could show you the command line. So I'm going to use the uh, the registry catalog. That's that schema registry I showed you. And I can see all the tables there. And then I can look at stocks. Those are the fields in stocks. Maybe I just want to see symbol, uh, date, time, and close value. Hopefully, I don't need quotes there. Yeah, I need quotes. Again, make sure. Maybe the first step you should do in any uh, ingest is is not use uh, reserved words as names. Uh, again, people who make a REST API and you use reserved words as names, that's, I don't know what I want to say about that. That's not really cool. So let, let's grab some more data from over here. And that's another reason why we push it into uh, Kafka, because net since it's in Kafka schema and the registry, I can just pull it back in Flink. I can wrap this in a deployable Java application that runs in Yarn or Kubernetes, and this app just runs. Now I could add more to this query. If you've done Spark SQL, you kind of get the idea. This is a continuous query though. As an event is pushed into published into Kafka, it's going to be consumed on the other end in the Flink app. This makes it uh, very easy for you to have some kind of continuous dashboard. Obviously, most people aren't going to want to sit here in the command line looking at it. Maybe I do. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people who are committers out there like this as well. 
but you know it's very easy to uh, translate this into uh, some app somewhere. I could put a UI on top of it, or I could have now if I push this via WebSockets to a mobile app. You know, very straightforward. But just to give you an idea of why we put it into Kafka, this buffer lets me use a lot of different uh, consumers of it, where I don't have to uh, put the data somewhere complex. Again, this is that command line tool running doing that SQL. It's just showing it to the screen as a sync. I could dump it to a file and push it to HDFS or Kudu. Again, we already have it in Kudu. So, and it was extremely straightforward to do that. So this is a very simple app. I don't know if we've had uh, too many questions. Yeah, I can answer a few. You want to go how much time we have? Time ran out really fast in the last two sessions. Uh, I think we still have uh, eight minutes. Oh, maybe. that's a lot of time. So did anything interesting come up? Oh, you can get you can get a NiFi shirt from Apache. I don't have to track down uh, certain people to get it. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to take a look at that link. Very cool. Um, so I can go through this, show you some of the things we're doing, the different pieces. Oh, I did miss Atlas, another awesome Apache project. In NiFi, I have a connection to Atlas. I just want to show you that. I have that here where I'm reporting the lineage to this uh, Atlas. Why this is cool is because here is that Kafka topic. Here is the lineage where it's how that got into Kafka. In NiFi, I invoked HTTP. Uh, I did a split. There was that query. Then I pushed it to that topic. And then you could see that second part of the app where I consumed it and pushed it into Kudu. And uh, a more, in another version, you also see any kind of Flink app or Spark app or maybe Hive or Impala things you've done with this all from Atlas, it's really helpful way to see the, the full lineage of what's going on with your application. And here you could add classification, all sort of other things. It's, uh, it's a nice way to track that. Do so you see here anything I've been pushing uh, data to? I've got those there. We could also search in here directly into NiFi, see the flows in NiFi and see what's going on there. There's a lot of stuff in the NiFi ones. You could pop to different uh, sections. But uh, yeah, Apache Atlas is a nice way also when you're trying to see what's going on with your apps. You know, here's a diagram of my NiFi to uh, Kafka Kudu app. Pretty cool. Uh, would you be able to somehow complete the lineage? If microservices in the middle of the pipeline. Now, Apache Atlas has some open connectors, so you could push that information to Atlas yourself using their API. Now you can also, what could show up here is could be uh, something missing if there's the Kafka Streams app or some other app that doesn't by default put Atlas information in there. So there could be a step like, I could have had a step in here where someone changed it. You know, you might want to keep it clean if if you're going to have another step that say a Kafka Streams microservice or a Spring Boot or a Quarkus or anything else, have that microservice zoom from this one and push to another topic or push to some other data store. If it's one of the data stores in the Apache Big Data area, most of them have Atlas connectors already, like HDFS, Hive, HBase, and those will show up. Yeah, and, and recently, uh, I believe we shipped uh, Atlas 2.1, uh, which is also providing a completely new API that you can uh, leverage by yourself to uh, complete the lineage based on your use case. So that's something you could use as well. Uh, I know the, yeah, the, uh, Atlas API changed a lot recently, and it's much easier to use. It was a, uh, it was quite uh, difficult to apprehend uh, on the 1.x release line. Um, 
recently with the 2.1 version, it's it's way easier. Oh, all the, the Kafka debate. Yeah, like everything in Apache, there's more than one project for everything. <laughs> so there's no other project for NiFi. I, I don't know who wants to take that one as a, as a divisive one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, there are very good reasons uh, to uh, choose one or the other. Uh, I mean, if we are completely uh, honest here, for this specific talk, I mean, uh, Kafka is something that we provide at Pladera. Uh, Dosa is something we don't provide yet, I want to say. Uh, so that's the reason. But from uh, a technical point of view for this specific use case, you could use both. And and NiFi also has processors for Pulsar. So yeah, you could use both. It's it's a perfectly fine uh, solution as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that one of the advantages is uh, NiFi and Flink could work with another one. Kafka is nice because there's a lot of tooling. There's a lot of connectors and drivers and people have been using it for a long time there's a lot of committers makes it pretty easy yeah so regarding the the discussion about uh, pulsar functions or kafka connectors uh sometimes people are wondering why using nifi um, um at all because you for some use cases you could do everything with the uh, pulsar functions or or Kafka connectors, and that's true. Um, as, I, as I said at the beginning, uh, from my point of view, NiFi makes sense when you have uh, many sources uh, with uh, very different protocols. You have batch-oriented sources with large files. You have uh, streaming-oriented sources. So NiFi is really to get the data in, uh, to make it available, and then use uh, tools like Kafka and Pulsar um, for doing some of the transformations. That's also perfectly valid. Uh, yeah, Camille is also another option. Uh, it's, it's really about um, also, do you want something that is really uh, easy to use? You have, I mean, you drag and drop, you can uh, get the data in from, from many sources in a consistent way. And then uh, I, I know some some of my colleagues are uh, big fans of Kafka Connect or Pulsar, and they are developers, and they are going to develop uh, their own functions or their own uh, Kafka connectors to deal with some data, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, when you are in an enterprise, you probably want a consistent way to get the data in, and and NiFi is really about this: getting the data in. Once it's available uh, in your clusters, then uh, yeah, there are many tools, many options. Uh, it's really, from my point of view, you should choose whatever is the best fit, the best fit for your use case and what uh, you will, uh, let's say, uh, use the most quickly to get some insights on your data. So I don't have any strong opinion on this. Uh, NiFi is really about getting the data in and making it available. Uh, it provides consistent way to access uh, many sources, provide uh, data lineage, uh, all of this. Um, also images. I, I wouldn't want to push an image through Pulsar, but now if I hear I'm pulling in webcam images from remote devices and passing them through uh, deep learning. Uh, I don't know you want to do that in Kafka Connector or Pulsar function. I don't think you want to push images through a, a message queue. Or video, or unstructured data. Yeah, so NiFi really shines when you have, uh, uh, let's say, a large set of use cases and a large set of uh, different sources. Uh, but uh, if you have a very simple use case uh, with uh, one source, one destination, uh, yeah, then. You probably can do it with uh, with Kafka Connect. It's more like uh, a, a larger discussion when you have many sources, many many use cases. Um, yeah, oh, and, and also, yeah. Also, if if you want to have a multi-cloud strategy uh, in your company where you have 
clusters and workloads running on premises, clusters and workloads running in the cloud. Uh, you can have an IFI cluster on both sides, and you can use uh, what we call side to side between the IFI clusters. Uh, this is going to uh, allow you to move data back and forth between your environments while also uh, ensuring consistent uh, policies, consistent data lineage. Um, uh, that's something I'm going to talk about in a few days uh, in some blog posts. Uh, but um, yeah, NiFi to move data back and forth between multiple environments is, is something really powerful, especially today when everyone is talking about uh, multi-cloud strategies or when you have multiple cloud providers uh, and it, it can be a nightmare to deal with uh, ingress and egress costs uh, with your cloud providers when you have some workloads uh, in Azure, some workloads in Google Cloud, uh, some stuff in AWS. Uh, I was at Google before and uh, that was one of the main concern of many customers, uh, how to deal with all this kind of uh, mess, <laughs> to be honest. So NiFi is, is a great answer also uh, for this. I don't know if we are over time or if we yeah, still I don't know when the birds of a feather starts. Well, if you still have questions, we can answer the questions. Uh, yeah, this is also NiFi hosting a live web page. I wouldn't try to do that in a in a function. <laughs> well, NiFi being used to expose APIs is actually quite common. Uh, hosting a website with NiFi is probably not something you want to do, but. Uh, Team is always really good at finding some uh, <laughs> cool use cases. Um, but uh, yeah, exposing APIs with NiFi is, is something really common. Uh, uh, we have many, many users doing this. Uh, so that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm doing that to push the SMM alerts to NiFi since they're JSON. I, I haven't figured out what I want to do with them, but it, it's very trivial to hook that up. You just have NiFi as a REST endpoint for alerts coming in. You know, we could do whatever you want with them. The data provenance is pretty awesome. Data provenance is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah can, can, can you show uh, the lineage directly in uh, based on the provenance data? Yeah. This is, I don't know, maybe you did already. Uh, this is a really cool feature uh, using the provenance data. Uh, this is also something uh, that you can use as I was uh, answering in some uh, some questions in the chat. Uh, provenance data is also something you can use to replace specific events in case of failures. Uh, so that's something you can leverage um, for, yeah, in case you something wrong happened uh, that's that's really powerful. Uh, provenance metadata is 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 a great feature of NiFi. Yeah, that that one's fun too. When you when you use NiFi to do some NiFi, like I'm trying to think, I had that. I had one that used the query NiFi processor to read provenance on one particular processor, and then push that to Kafka, and then have NiFi read that and process those provenance events and then use them for, I forgot what I was using before, and then they'd push them to Kudu. Oh, Airflow. Uh, NiFi versus Airflow is, is a good question. Um, again, really depends uh, what kind of processing and jobs you want to uh, orchestrate, uh, but uh, if it's really about job orchestration, then Airflow is probably a better option. Um, again, um, really depends on the use case. Uh, you probably want a combination of both for some use cases. Um, we, I mean, happy to discuss it, but um, really depends on the details. Uh, Airflow is great uh, for orchestration uh, and, and triggering jobs, uh, spa jobs, hive jobs, uh, things like that. It's really great. 
um, so yeah airflow is doing things that NIFI shouldn't be used for and the opposite is also true so really depends on the use case I think the the queuing and buffering is something very unique to NIFI yeah yeah airflow is is really pure orchestration um, which is great you can do orchestration with NIFI but you can't do as much as you could do with Airflow in terms of orchestration. So again, really depends what you are trying to achieve. Uh, if, if your orchestration needs are simple, um, as Tim said in the chat, you have scheduling per processor, so you can already orchestrate quite a bit, uh, but you probably don't want uh, to use NiFi for every kind of orchestration needs. So really depends. Uh, I don't have a straight answer for this. I, I think keep Spark in Airflow. I mean, well, that's what we're doing. That seems to seems to make the most sense. Or in oh, our old buddy Uzi. Yeah. And I don't want to write Uzi though. Yeah. Airflow, Airflow is pretty nice. Okay, uh, we we are definitely over we're time. Definitely over. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if. Uh, no one kicked this out though. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still recording, so. It's still recording. Well, if, if you still have questions, uh, the, the community uh, is very active. So feel free to join the Apache Slack uh, for NiFi. Uh, I can give you the link right now. Uh, that can be something useful. Um, what what about your uh, session coming up? Do we have a link to that? I should have thought of that. Uh, I don't have a link handy, but uh, I'm trying to see if I could find it real quick because that's that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, so here's the link to uh, the Slack where the for Apache NiFi there uh, we have a lot of people there. Uh, if you want to ask questions on the mailing lists, uh, we answer honestly. We answer all the questions. Uh, the community is really active, so if you, yeah, if you have questions, feel free to. Uh, to go there, um, uh, do you know if there are any plans to write bulletins to logs? Um, so by default, a, by default, if you are not changing anything, any log which is warning or higher is also a built-in. So and and vice versa. So built-ins should always be logged. But if you are asking about a specific uh, location for persisting buildings and disinformation, uh, right now uh, that's not possible. I mean, that's completely merged into the full logs of NiFi. Uh, but uh, yeah, options will be to use the site to site reporting task for buildings and then do some um, flow to send this data somewhere. Uh, I know there are discussions about uh, dedicated logging files uh, per process group or, or things like that. Uh, that's an ongoing discussion. Um, I actually started working on this a few years back and it was getting messy. Uh, so I didn't do it. That's doable, but uh, it raises a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, the performance impact. Um, so yeah, right now my recommendation would be to go through uh, reporting task to have the built-in uh, transformed as flow files in NIFI, and then you can have a dedicated uh, flow to deal with uh, the built-ins the way you want. Uh, if you want to send it to some places or to uh, send an email or uh, I don't know, open a, a Jira or whatever, that's what I would recommend. Um, yeah, so Tim was talking about uh, a live session I'm doing in a few days. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know where the link is. Uh, I I, I'm sure I tweeted it at some point, but that does not help. Yeah, so it must be available somewhere. Uh, but oh, yeah, I'm, do I'm doing a live session uh, on Thursday. Um, 
And the idea is I don't have anything prepared, which is kind of scary. Please, man. Uh, and basically, oh, you, will be able, you will be able to ask for what you want to see me doing. Um, yeah, here's the link. Thanks. So that's something I'm doing on Thursday. Um, I know the Apache Con is still live on Thursday, so you will have to choose between the two. I'm sorry about that. It's it, it will it's be recorded thing. though, right? Yeah, it will be recorded. Everything is recorded. So yeah. So if you're registered, you could watch it later. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else or? Uh, because I, I i feel like there is a another session right <laughs> okay why no one's kicked this out i don't understand i don't know when the birds of a birds of a feather start for streaming uh i don't know um if i click on on the sessions link i guess i'm kicked out of this one so oh, yeah i i started a new or well, new window that has started but okay. I guess uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's close this one. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for for attending uh, this call. Um, it was a pleasure. Thanks, Tim. Thanks again, man.